Hey everyone, it's John at John's DIY Playground. Today we're going to go into deep dive part one of the home automation system I've developed. Uh, this is going to be the first of many deep dives, so please subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified of when my new videos come out. On my channel I have a home automation system introduction video, which I'll link to in the information box below. Also be aware that Felix Rusu at lowpowerlab.com is a really great uh, how-to under his projects tab, a home automation gateway on how to get this set up on your Pi and running. Once you have it running like I do, there's two critical files we want to talk about to customize it for your setup. The first one is called settings.js, the other is called metrics.js. Now I'm working in a Windows environment, so the tools that I use to get to my Raspberry Pi, first of all, is called WinSCP. So I tunnel into my Raspberry Pi, which you see here, under the Home Pi Motino directory, I have the following file structure. So as mentioned, the first file I want to look at is settings.js, and the other is going to be metrics.js. I've taken these two files and created them generically and made them available on GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash John's DIY Playground, you'll see a folder called Home Automation Examples. Click on that and you'll see this folder which is going to have other subfolders when I add other remote control nodes and other explanations in the future. But today we're going to talk about just the gateway, which is your Raspberry Pi. Settings-example.js is this first file that I mentioned. And if we take a look at it, this one is not a very big file. But it does have some very critical information that you need to get your gateway running. The first section you could actually ignore until you get other things going. But if you want to have email alerts or text alerts to your phone, you need to fill in this first section. So I've used Gmail for my setup. I've created a uh, Gmail account and then put in the address and the password in these fields here. And the same goes for text alerts. I have my cell phone number and then vtext.com for a Verizon service so that text messages are sent directly to my phone for certain alerts and events. This area is critical depending on how your setup is with your Motino that plugs into your Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Motino USB, so I had to change this area to say TTY USB 0 in order for the Raspberry Pi to look for that Motino plugged into the USB port. Another thing that I'm using is a Wi-Fi thermostat. So you must find out the static IP of that thermostat and plug it in right here, then save the file. When you save the file, it needs to be called settings.js. And again, it should be located under the Motino directory as I have right here. Now let's have a look at the metrics.js file. Again, I have this available on GitHub. So I will go into it here. This is a much larger and more sophisticated file. This JavaScript runs over 600 lines, I believe. But it has, let's say, four distinct sections. The first section starts around line number 59. That's where we have our metric definitions. And what that means is for every piece of data that comes from your uh, wireless sensors, they need to be associated with a metric, so those metrics are defined in this section starting on line number 59. If you want graphing for certain metrics, that's also defined in this area. So you'll see some of them that have, excuse me, <clears throat> JavaScript with graph 1, log value 1, etc. We'll get into this for an example to explain it further, but that tells you that it's possible to graph something. Um, it's in the metrics section. Now line number 170 starts a section called sample events and alerts. 
these are extras that go onto a certain node let's say if you want to be alerted of something for example there's one two three four different alerts I have here for different things when my garage door opens for example I can get a text message so those types of things are configured in this section under 170 I also want to note that my metrics.js file in github looks different than Felix's base example file that he provides because I've already added extra nodes and events that are not included in his example file. Okay then the next section is section number three which begins on line 249 this is the default moat definitions file this is the area where things come together let's say for the website presentation of your metrics so if you have a metric that has certain controls and you want to show those controls then those things have to be put into this section so for example on my garage mode again I have controls for opening or closing the door so if I go back and look at this I can see that I have a current state of the garage door head and car that means my garage door is closed and there's a car present in the bay if I want to open my garage door this button here is possible and put here from the code located under that section under line 249 and when the door is open the button will actually change to a close and that's all covered in this area um, these lines of code here now the final section is under 557 and that's a helper functions area so you can kinda call this a catch-all section this is where if you need to call external functions or do certain things with data um, you can call functions from the above lines of code in the previous three sections and it can come down here and run um, various types of functions so there's things for the radio thermostat um, there's other things about uh, calculating timings and I've actually added one of my own for an external um, service called UbiDots which sends some of my data to a external cloud service so other people can look at it on websites so that's all in here so for example here's some of that Ubi dots I had talked about so that's the main structure of how metrics.js works so let me next get into one example of how we could add graphing to an item that doesn't have graphing okay so going back to our dashboard let's take a look at the Wi-Fi thermostat the Wi-Fi thermostat has a number of different metrics here, six different metrics. This one pin here indicates that this number, 67 degrees Fahrenheit, is going to be shown on my dashboard. If I look further at this first current temp item and click on it, I can see that this is um, showing that I do want it on the dashboard. The second item is showing that data logging is not enabled because it's grayed out. If I were to click it, now you can see graphing is enabled and it will start recording what my current temperatures are throughout the day. So I can toggle that on and off with that button. But now going back to these six metrics, let's look at target temperature for example. If I click on that one and look deeper, you can see I can show the metric on the dashboard but that graphing function is missing. Now what makes something graphable versus not graphable? The answer is you have to go into the metrics.js file in that first section we talked about that starts around line number 59. So let's take a look. I've pulled up line number 153 on GitHub, so these start the thermostat specific metrics. As mentioned previously, current temperature is this line of code here, and in the definition we can see that there are some extra things that aren't shown on the let's say target temperature when you compare this line of code to the current temperature line of code you've got things for graphing such as units graph one graph options etc now there's really two different types of graphs from my perspective when you're using this system 
both of the line graphs, but there's two different ways to make a line graph. The first one is, for example, current temperature. You're going to get a constant streaming of values, and the graph will simply interpret that and plot them on a chart. But what happens when you have something like the state of your thermostat? So, for example, we go back into our thermostat. And what's the furnace's current status? Well, right now mine is heating. That means the heat is on. I can graph this because I've added lines of code, which I'll show here. That was previously not the case. When you go to do a graph for something like this, there's actually no numbers. You've got only three states. It can be heating, it can be cooling, like when the air conditioning's on, or it can be off. So what I'm going to do is set up this graph so that I have three states and I'm just going to pick arbitrary numbers for each one. I'm going to make heating a value of one. I'm going to make this thermostat or furnace not doing anything, the off status is 0 0.5. And then if it's cooling, I'm going to set it to a value of zero. So the way I do that in the metrics.js file is here's what the original line of code looked like for the thermostat's status. And you can see we had three different states. We could have cooling, heating, or off. And then it basically, the line of code ended there. And that was it because graphing was not previously offered. Now I've commented that line of code out. Excuse me, I'm sorry for scrolling improperly here. Um, but the code has to be changed and the way I interpret changing it is to make three different lines of code for the graphing. I have to break up this state of cooling, state of heating, and state of off into three distinct lines. So the first one I did is a new name called T-state cool. They each have to have unique names. T-state heat and T-state off. So these are my three new lines of code that replace this original line. So what I did is for the cooling line, I set up the graph so that it has a value of cooling with pin number one that just gives it a series, for example, a graph number, but its value is critical. So that's where I said, if I want cooling, I want it to be value of zero. For heat, again, you have the same pin one, graph one, but now the value is one. And for off, you have showed the value of off should be a log value of 0 0.5. So that's how you set that up. Now, once you've saved your file to metrics.js and you try to check your system to see if it's working, it's important to realize that the system won't reload these JavaScript files on your Raspberry Pi until you force it to reload them. Now there's two ways to do that. One is to completely reboot your Raspberry Pi. The other is to set up a terminal session like PuTTY, and I have it so that I can automatically pull that up from my WinSCP. When you go into PuTTY, you just have to log in, and I'm now remotely tunneling into my Raspberry Pi. And without having to reboot, I can just issue this pkill node command. And what that'll do is it forces the uh, Motino gateway to go down for just a few moments and it basically reset itself and it'll come back up and start running again. So here you can see we're back up and running. So once again, graphing was not available originally for this furnace current status and I was able to enable it and graph it by putting those lines of code additionally into the metrics.js. So I hope that helped today. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to try and answer them for you. And again, please uh, subscribe to my channel so when other videos come out, you'll be notified of them being available. And if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up like. Thanks for watching John's DIY Playground, and have a great day.